Hello, Orlando. This is State Representative Carlos Guillermo Smith. And I, as a previous Champion for Equality Award recipient, fully understand the type of work and leadership and advocacy for the LGBTQ community that is really, really required to make sure that our community has the support that we need in the full march towards equality, which is why I could not be more honored than to be here to help present this year's newest Champion of Equality Award recipient, someone whose name you probably have never, ever heard of, a very obscure and unknown person in the city of Orlando. That would be none other than State Representative Anna Escamani. Of course, of course, we all know who Anna is, but why do we know who Anna is? We know who she is because of her commitment as what she calls a accomplice to the LGBTQ plus community that she has been. She was one of the leading voices in 2016 in the aftermath of Pulse calling for equality for the LGBTQ community, making sure the families and survivors had the support services they needed and was calling for common sense gun safety laws to protect our communities from gun violence. She's an unapologetic champion for the Florida Competitive Workforce Act to finally bring non-discrimination protection statewide in employment, housing, and public accommodations. And in this last year, Representative Escamani championed legislation to prohibit discrimination at private schools who have been discriminating against LGBTQ students and their families. It is my honor to present this year's Champion of Equality Award to none other than the incomparable Anna V. Escamani. Thank you, Back up, back Ten, up, six feet, back six up, six feet. feet. <laughs> the queen is here. <laughs> Thank you so much, Carlos. It is such an honor to be with everyone today. I am so incredibly lucky to join you virtually as we mark this really special occasion and what is an incredible honor for me. Um, many folks know that I come from very humble beginnings. I grew up right here in Orlando as the daughter of working class immigrants from Iran. And I, I, I know what it feels like to feel different and to be left out. And I actually remember when I met my first gay friend who was in my middle school, we had a crush on the same boy. And, and that was the moment for me where as a very young girl, I began to understand that you know, liberation for one person is tied to liberation of all people. And I became what, what Rep. Smith referred to as an accomplice to our LGBTQ plus community um, from that moment on. Now, we know that there is so much work to do when it comes to championing equality and actually building a state that cares about every single person, no matter who they love uh, or bathroom they use, you know, what their um, identity is or orientation. And Florida has a long way to go. And it takes not allyship, but accomplices to get it done. And by that, I mean, it's not, it's not about going to a pride event or wearing rainbows. It's actually about showing up when things get really, really tough and, and not leaving that individual side when those conflicts can rise or those attacks come. Any step of progress results in backlash. And I tell folks all the time that if you're experiencing backlash, that means you're doing something right. And some of the legislative issues that Rep. Smith referred to already, Competitive Workforce Act as one of them, um, that has been legislation filed for, at this point, over a decade. And we keep coming back, and we keep coming back, because we know that not only is it critically important that we have a, a state that prioritizes equality and sets the tone where no matter who you are, you're going to be welcome in this state, but it's also critically important to build hope to build hope in a time where things feel like they're so dire and that the world is on fire. And when we can go to Tallahassee and stand together as directly impacted people and as their accomplices and say that this matters and we're not gonna stop fighting until we get it done. 
um, that sets a tone not just for the legislature, but for every person that engages with the legislature or maybe doesn't care about politics, but now will. And it reminds me, too, of some of the other fights we've had this past year, um, in particular, protecting our trans kids. And I want to take a moment to say that black lives matter, trans lives matter, and it's so important that we fight back against any type of division or separation within our communities and make sure that we don't leave anyone behind as we fight for progress. If there's one thing that we've all learned from Harvey Milk's legacy, and it's, it's that liberation for the LGBTQ plus people is connected to liberation for all people. And it reminds me of Harvey Milk's uh, commitment, not just to equality, but also to community. You know, Harvey Milk was a man that prioritized neighborhoods, and he really wanted a government that was responsive directly to its people. And those are the philosophies and the mantras that we've embraced and we've, we've facilitated and we've honored throughout what is two years of public service and I, I hope for many, many more. And so having this honor you know, for this occasion in Harvey Milk's name and in the shoes of folks like Carlos is something that I am internally grateful for. And um, I am inspired by the, the struggle and the triumphs and also even the moments where we don't make it through. I mean. We have successes in this work. We've had incredible Supreme Court decisions that have uh, secured freedoms and liberation, but we know that there's still so much more work to do. And I am reflective always of the 49 angels we lost at Pulse. And Pulse Nightclub is in my district. And one of the reasons why I ran for office was because I felt like our incumbent at the time when we lost our 49 angels was trying to avoid any change. He barely spoke on the subject. He he didn't address the concerns of gun safety. He didn't protest with us or march with us as we demanded equality. And I felt like our community didn't just need an ally, but we needed an accomplice. And so again, I'm so grateful for this honor. Uh, words cannot even describe just how much gratitude I have and love I have for our entire community and especially for the LGBTQ plus community. And just know that I always got your back today, tomorrow, forever. Thank you so much.